I got a question for you. What does it mean to be black? What does it mean to be white? What does it mean to be Asian? If you found yourself asking that question, hop into this conversation with us. Let's find the root. Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Find the Root. You're here with Jordan Jones and Caleb Jones. And guys, we're here for another episode. And we're so thankful to have you back with us for episode two. So guys, as you can imagine, the last episode was something that really, how can I say, rocked a few people. But in a good way, it challenged their thinking. It challenged them to begin to understand what is race. And I had a conversation with somebody um, this week um, about just how they found the episode. And they said to me, you know what, Jordan, it's what I find with you guys, you love to talk about controversial subjects. And I was like, ooh, okay, that's that's interesting. But I said, do you know what, though? My response to that was this, that yeah. our true aim for Let's Find the Root is to what? Find the truth behind these concepts. Yeah, Not just church concepts, but concepts that are, de- are dealing with us day you know what I mean? We're not just people that are going to come in and just say, this is what we think from the church. We want to be affecting people from all different walks of life. So, guys, listen, get ready for another um, episode. This episode is going to be interesting. Sit tight. And as usual, guys, with our episodes, we start off with Caleb just giving us a little recap on what we spoke about last week. And then also a little bit about what we might speak about this week. But listen, stay engaged. Click like. Click the comments, please. Drop the comment in. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I see you. Yeah. Let's go, Caleb. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's so, go. Let's go. Let's where go. we went from last episode was we started off looking at, well, something which Jordan always says to me, which is race is a social construct. So, in Let's Find the Root, like Jordan's saying, we're searching for the truth and we don't want to just use jargon. So, what do we mean by a social construct? So this is what I say, George. If I was to give you a piece of plastic right now, and I told you plastic. that, yeah, plastic, yeah. and I told you plastic. that plastic is worth a hundred pounds, what would you say to me? I'll first ask you, are you sure? And if you're okay, <laughs> that's the first couple of questions I was asking. But I would definitely say, hundred percent, that is not worth a hundred pounds. That's what I yeah, would say. Yeah, just. It, Because it's a piece of plastic, okay? Yeah, it's a piece of plastic, yeah. Now, if I gave you that piece of plastic and it was a perfect replica of a £100 note and I gave it to you now and I told you it was £100, it was worth £100, what would you tell me? God bless you and I'll take that to the bank. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Because what... Now, what was the change there? The change wasn't necessarily down to the actual substance or material, but it was down to the societal and cultural value surrounding money and what the idea of money represents. So Mm -hmm. that is what we mean. And money is also a social construct. So what we're saying about race is that race is not a... um, identification of the substance of a person so like we defined Mm -hmm. last week ethnicity encompasses more substantial evidence of you know genealogy place of origin history and cultural experience Mm -hmm. but in actual fact race actually is a societal um, construct that we've basically framed to identify people according to um a kind of idea or ideology that has been developed over time because we even see in um, some historical proceedings in courts when they're trying to define what race is especially when you look at um, when the slave codes really started to really take off in Virginia and they're trying to distinguish well what is someone being white Um, Mm -hmm. they struggled they struggled quite hard because um, it is quite um subjective so Mm -hmm. then we ask ourselves okay then so does that mean because it's a societal um because it's a social construct does Mm -hmm. that mean that it doesn't hold any value anymore 
Wow, wow. Is that, is, that, is that what we're saying? What do you think, Jordan, about that? What's the value? Wow, wow. Does it still hold value or does it still affect us even? I think that's a nice yeah. way to put it. it Maybe, guys, does it, does, it, does it still affect us? So even though what we're saying is it's a social construct, um, meaning necessarily that it doesn't have any roots um, or any substance, like the way Caleb said, substance behind it. I think that's a great way to say it, substance, meaning that it has nothing to trace back to or has no weight to it, but yet it still affects us. So if it still affects us, as Caleb is, while he's asking, if it still affects us, now how do we go about dealing with that or how do we go about looking about it? So because if something affects us, it's real. It's not like something that that we can just brush aside but it's a real thing that's happening on the inside of us so then what we find is now that um as Kate has spoken about that they couldn't categorize whether somebody was white or somebody was black they, they, they struggled to do that because it's based upon an experience um and that's Ooh, wait 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 uh you, you just said something there that kind of grabbed me <laughs> it's based upon an experience okay Okay. Okay, let's let's pause unpack there. That. So, um like you said, I'm happy that you said that because just because it's a social construct doesn't mean that it's it's not real. It still affects yeah, us yeah. day to day. Like me me and Jordan will definitely um acknowledge that and see it in our own lives. We are um we are Afro Caribbean men, but because we're yes. Afro Caribbean men, we we come under that um social construct of being black. We come underneath that definition. We accept that and we understand that. We're not going to say that, you know, we're not. Um, And and so because of that and because of society and what we've built around this construct, it has affected us in some um, deep and real ways, you know, through racism, through things that have happened just because of how society perceives us. But as, as, as Jordan said, it's down to an experience. So like... Okay, so now let's bring in the exp- experiential um, kind of evidence for being black. So yes, first of yes, all, yes. you know, me being in a in a a school or even in university, this is what I find quite interesting. In in school, you're just identified as black, but no one necessarily sees like there's a lot of difference between someone from African, like That's right. straight from Definitely. like an African an African country that was born there or that was raised there culturally to someone that comes from like Afro-Caribbean descent it's Mm -hmm. really vast and different like the experience the language the culture is extremely different but like once you get into um, an environment where you're in the minority like within um, within university or within school it's just oh you're black it's like well well, you're black so you band together and it's like well well, if you knew, like, he doesn't get my experience because no, no. we don't, like, we, not live he's, the same. He, we yeah, not yeah. live the same because he's he's yeah, come yeah. from Africa. He's understood that culture. He speaks a different language. Yeah. It's a whole different, they, the food's different. The culture's different. The whole behavior is yeah, different. Yeah, like, yeah, how, yeah. How, how is that the same? But because of this social construct, it's like you, you start to negate who I am and just talk to the label instead of talking to the label, individual. Yeah. So you yeah, you no yeah. longer see the individual anymore. You just see a label. You don't yeah, you don't yeah, respect yeah. the individual nature of the person. You just say, okay, you're 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 black. So you can basically talk past me. You can talk past my opinions because I'm black or because I belong to this social idea. I have to think a certain way. It's like it, right, it takes right, away the power right. that we're basically speaking about, even in our last series about individualism. Individualism, yeah. It takes it away so. Um, strongly and that's why it kind of it it it, it speaks to um it kind of in in my opinion actually marginalizes the experience of people yes it does yeah i think what it does it generalizes it as well mm-hmm. um that everyone's experience is the same or similar um depending upon you know the color of their their skin when that's not true even when it comes to caribbean people there's caribbean people that were born in the caribbean and moved to england and there's caribbean people that were born in england and have a completely different experience even though they have the same kind of lineage do you know what i mean so even in regards to that that's that's different and then on top of that um 
the experience of us going into the workplace is is going to be affected as well because it's going to be different. It's there's so much layers to this. Is is as simple as okay, yes, you may call us this, but what comes about with it? So there's un, you know unconscious bias that you know will be yeah. affected just because you look a certain way, it will affect you. And these are all the things that. Not just you know black people, but other ethnicities also had to face as well. And what we're saying is that we don't want to negate your experience. We mm. just want to address it. Yeah. And when we say we want to address it, we want to look at the reasons behind why this happened, where this came from. And in fact, unpick it so then not only do you feel liberated, but so do we. You know what I mean? It's about us being okay to be who we're called to be and who we see ourselves in the mirror because society doesn't allow you to do that oh. which is which is which is yeah, tough exactly. I know, and that, I know you, you, you think it's you think you know, you know you think it's a play on words but it's not no no like it's, it's, it's not. that's why we explain it in the way that we are and like you have pointed out to unconscious bias that's something that has been quite a trigger word in 2020 yes and very, so what we mean much. by unconscious bias is the fact of before you interact with the individual, you, because of the societal construct of race, have a preconceived notion in your head of how that person is to respond, how that person is to react. And yes. you treat the person according to not who they are, but like not as, as Dr. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. said, um, he wanted people to be judged by uh, the cont- the content of their heart, not the c- not the color of their skin, skin. and yeah. that is what unconscious bias is working against that ideal. The fact of unconscious bias looks at the person and says, "Okay, well, they they're this person, and they have to respond in that way." And the worst mm-hmm. part about unconscious mm-hmm. bias is in the unconscious nature of it is that people can't s- ne- necessarily see that they're being biased right. because they've been programmed according to society. So mm-hmm. I like that you brought that up because the point is then, how do you combat unconscious bias? How do you, how do you combat yeah. that? Because if the unconscious bias is tied to the concept of race, yes, does that yes. mean that I have to, to get rid of the unconscious bias, do I have to dig deeper to the roots, which is race? Mm, yes. Definitely. And then once you dug deep to the root of what race is and we understand where that concept or construct has come from, then what we can do then is re-educate people to be able to see themselves as they should. So so there's so let me, go on, let me go just ahead. get to that here. Because I think you've pointed out something good. Then you re educate. But if I want to get rid of unconscious bias and I'm digging out uh, can I keep can I keep, can I get rid of unconscious bias without getting rid of race? To, if we keep race, do we keep mm-hmm. unconscious bias? Yes. Are we willing to throw away race? That's an individual question, that is. That, that's a very individual question. Yeah, individual and question. I want people because, to respond yeah. to that in the comments. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's an individual are question. You, because. Are you willing? You're not going, and we're going to unpack mm-hmm. this a lot more in the yeah, episodes to yeah. come. But just a a question to go to you now, Um, you that are watching, the Root family, are you okay with throwing away the idea of your race? And there's no right or wrong answer for that. Yeah, yeah. But we just want to hear from you. Yeah, that's... Is it a yes or is it a no? You you don't even have to give your explanation, but... You know, no, no. we'd love to hear from you. Please, yeah, drop a comment yeah. in. Drop a comment in, guys. Um, another question I would like to ask um, would be, can something that marginalises you be something that builds you up or brings you up? That's my question. And drop that in the, and drop that in the comment as well, mm. okay? Guys, it's yeah. important. In fact, let me say it like this. Root family. Let me say that again. Root family. It's important that when we look at this, that you don't look at who's speaking, don't look at what the faces are saying here, because we have our own experience, but we don't want to maybe necessarily use that as a reason why we're pushing this. We want the truth, 
to be the loudest voice in this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look past our exterior and look into the words that we are saying and allow your heart to be open to that at least. You know what I mean? Even if you don't agree, for for the for the interest of the conversation, for it to continue, please look at it yourselves. Yeah, that's an important thing. That's important. You yeah. say this all the time. Be teachable in all things. Be teachable. Be willing to hear, even if you don't agree with the opinion. The least we could do is listen. Yeah, real talk. It's it's about yeah. investigating for ourselves because as much yeah, as yeah. we have our research and our understanding, it's important for you to form your own opinions and be able to take it away and also to combat us to as well. Yes. Uh, Say I don't, that again, Caleb. I don't, form your own opinion. Form your Say own opinion. Again. Say it again. Even if you get in the com in the com in the comments and say. I don't agree with you. That's that's, that's cool. cool. And we're willing that's to talk cool. to you. We're, we're yeah. willing to talk to you over that. So yeah, just moving the conversation forward. Those are tough questions, and it brings us to the idea of what we we're saying of it being the there's a black experience or there's an Asian experience, there's a white experience, and yeah. um, because as we're saying, it's a social construct, and mm -hmm. it's identified by a societal experience. A cultural, ex a, a cultural experience that has come from, um, as we defined last week, it's actually come from the West. But because of the dominance of America, it's actually been pervasive throughout the world. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, because as we described before, it, it, it found its roots in America, as we said in the first yes, episode. Yes, yes, so yes, just yes. moving that forward then, and we're saying it found its roots in America, but where did it really start to flourish? Because we, what we saw in, in, in the Maryland colony is the usage of white. But then, okay, so where does this idea of um, black and Asian come into play where did those kind of constructs come together because it's one thing to start to use the word white but it's another thing to um identify races of people like black yeah. and asian so i think that's one thing that we want to basically go into and i would i'd i'd tease this part to begin with and we will unpack it a bit more so as i as, as i said before I said that the idea of white found found its origin in that first usage in those passages in the Maryland colony documents and proceedings from the General Assembly. Um, and that mm -hmm. goes back to um, the 1680s. But the progression of the idea of race actually found its strength in the 18th century. And that is where you really start to see it. And I'll point you to this person called Johann Frederick Blumenbach. So I, I did German, but let me let me tell you, my German's not great. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fantastic, but I think that's how you so pronounce it. Um, yeah. So he, um, it's a German name. So first of all, I could, uh, this idea of race is kind of finding it from him. But in 1779 he put forward his findings of dividing the human species into five races. And he based this on research to do with human skulls. So this is the first beginnings of what we'd understand to be eugenics. Yeah, and that is a set of beliefs and practices that aim to improve the genetic quality of a human population by grouping people according to superior and inferior races okay mm -hmm. so when he first did that this was his beginnings so this is how he classified them he classified them into five races first going with the caucasian race so this included europe um, asia minor north africa and west asia then the mongolian race so East Asia, Central Asia, and South Asia. The Ethiopian race, that was Sub-Saharan Africa. The American race, which included North America and South America. And the Malayan race, which is Southeast Asia. So this is the beginning of these kind of classifications of races. which And we see this through 
and this person who put forth his findings in 1779. So the funny thing is that looks quite different to our idea of black, white and Asian today. But that is the beginning foundation. And the funny thing is that these categorizations um, is it, it's basically can you imagine can you imagine that what they're basically saying is that the 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 ancestor of um of these different we have separate ancestors and there's mm. an inferiority inferiority and a superiority to some over others so it, it's quite interesting that goes directly against and if you're a christian or if you're just a scientist um in mm. general most people believe that the human race came from, um, came or came from like one, one um, origin or one uh, ancestor. That's that's something that we believe as Christians, but also that's something that's accepted by mo- by most scientists today. Just, yeah. But those scientists actually wanted to divide and say, oh, we don't come from the same types of people, um, and so because of that, it's this. Again, what we're saying is divisive nature behind yeah. race, continually perpetuating this idea yeah. that we are not the same, we are different. And so, yeah. once again, it, it asks us again, do we believe or do we accept those things? And do we, do we see ourselves as different? So, one thing which I'd ask you today, do you see yourself as a a black um, or Asian or white person as intrinsically different as a human being to another race. So that goes to you if you're Asian and you see yourself and you compare yourself to black or white, or if you see yourself as white and you play, compare yourself to black or Asian, if you see yourself as black, you can compare yourself to Asian and white. Do you see yourself what do you see first when you look at each other? What What do you see first? Mm-hmm. Do you see yourself first as human beings? Or do you see yourself first as black, white, Asian? Mm. I think that's the kind of question. How do you kind of look at it, Jordan? What What's the first way that you identify yourself? That's the question which I'd ask you, Jordan. What's the first way you identify yourself? Well, the f- the first way that... I think you can identify yourself is first if you're looking at somebody um, and they were looking at you. I think it'd be good for you to first just look at them as a human being. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't see you looking past somebody and not looking at them as a human being. As we said before, you know, we're, we're, we're Christians and we believe that there is a, originated to everything. Everybody can, you know, even in the fact of us having computers, a creator who made the computer, there's, there's a creator that made the sofa or the chair that I'm sitting on right now. And there was an originator that made us. And that's the first thing that I'd look at. I'd look at you and I see a human being. Okay. After I see a human being, the next thing that I would look at is the type of person you are. So I'm not looking at your skin color. I'm not looking at your hair type. I'm not looking at the clothes that you're wearing. If it's questionable, then we'll have a conversation about it, obviously. But other than that, I would say the first thing I'll be looking at is, you know, who are you? Tell me something about you. You know what I mean? So what kind of comes from within you? That's the person you are. Um, not I think that's necessarily great. what you look like. And you know I, what I mean? I, I that's wish, how I would look at it. And to be honest, I think that's really good. And I wish I was as good as you in, in, in looking at that. But it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning of this conversation when we are talking about unconscious unconscious bias I I think because of the way that society has coded us and um, okay what I would say to you is if you'd asked me a different question and said what do you think um, the other person is looking at when they see you then I would give you a completely different answer yeah I think and and it's true because it's one thing which I'd say and this is an argument which my friends when we've had conversations is that sometimes biases help us to understand the world and one thing like we have certain groupings it it actually does it actually does 
Um, Interesting. But how we decide our world to be shaped is up to us, and that's why I ask you the yeah. question of whether you're going to accept race to be a way that shapes our world. That's right. But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But going back, reversing, reverse, 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 reverse. So, <laughs> so, um, when we look at people, okay, we make certain things. So, a healthy, a healthy. Um, unconscious bias or not unconscious bias or a healthy bias is this if I see someone holding a knife it doesn't matter the context if I walk past someone holding a knife mm, I mm, walk mm. over the road that's a yeah, that's yeah. that's actually that's, me. Was, yeah, that's, that's actually right, yeah, yeah. profiling yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the profiling or the bias that I'm putting upon that person is for a protective nature so Sometimes in these ish, in these things, there's actually some ideas because those are the ways in which human beings process things. Mm -hmm. Process things by evaluating um, certain similar situations. We take mental images. We learn from our experiences. We learn from our textbooks. And you say, if I approach a certain issue, I respond in a certain way. So that is how we kind of process things. But mm -hmm. like I was saying, um, to just reveal there's some good in it, but there's also some bad. But these biases come from our experiences and learning. So like mm -hmm. we said again, the negative unconscious biases towards people concerning race have been programmed into us societally. And, and, and that's how we view things societally. Mm -hmm. But... Is that part, is is that something that okay? If I want to deconstruct that, it again brings me back to this main question of if I want to deconstruct those wrong ways of thinking, it then comes to the way that I learnt. Mm -hmm. Because no one pops out of the womb racist, do they? <laughs> no, no, exactly, exactly, yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not like that. So. It's not like that. So yeah, you're right. Then. It goes back to the the thing we said, I think, quite um, at the beginning of the conversation about education. Um, and also, I think experience is such a big thing. I think sometimes it's overlooked a little bit um, because before we even stepped into a school, our parents have an experience. Mm. And that is something that would be passed down re kind of regardless. And same with our children. So the only way for That's that, big. for us to impact... Um, change and education is first by tackling it from the family too yeah and have and having because let's let's having be honest, those conversations at home having those conversations at home yes because you know as you said no one just pops out being a ra racist you know when there's a five-year-old saying you end this or you be p this it's not as if they've just come out of it you know it's come out of the, movie, <laughs> it's not gonna... the home you know what i mean a little boy when you saying those things it's like oh, oh that reminds me oh wow all right that reminds you know I mean? me a little girl a little girl on our estate um there's not much i don't think there's when we're growing up there's not there's only like one other um um yeah you afro caribbean be a family yeah, african around family any black like sort of anyone no, no, from an african that. diaspora yeah no way. So I remember one of the that a, a family moved in. I'm gonna. Oh yes, across the road. A family yeah. moved in, <laughs> yeah. and the little yeah. girl said to our sister, "I don't like you because you're black." Yeah. She's mm. she's. I think she was only about like six or seven. No, she was she was very young. She's yeah. young. I think she was younger than that. I think she was younger than that at the time. You know that she's not yeah. saying yeah. that because like she's experienced. Like it, it, it's down to something that she's learnt. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. She wouldn't have even encountered much black people. So it's something that these conversations need to start at home, like real, yes, real at, home. at home, And yeah. rather, I feel like maybe this is this might be a bit a bit tough, but maybe the conversation. The conversations at home are the birthplace, are one of the places where some of these things fester. But also, I I had I heard a, a interview, and I might just link it in here. Do you think that race plays a part in wealth dis distribution, or either a mindset that you can't Today? or cannot? Yeah. No, you don't. No, I don't. I don't. Hey. You and I, we're proof. 
Why would race have anything to do with it? Stick your, put your mind to what you want to do and go for that. Uh, it's kind of like religion to me. It's a good excuse for not getting there. Yeah. You know, I said, and it's probably get me in trouble, but I said to some of my colleagues recently, said, so I know that it's an issue, but I've been, it seems like every single day on television I'm talking about race and it's because of the news cycle, it's in the news, but I'm so, sometimes I get so tired of talking about it, I want to... I want to just go, this is over, can we move on? And, and, and if you talk about it, it exists. Right. Yeah. It's not like it exists and we refuse to talk about it, but making it a bigger issue than it needs to be is the problem we have. Why don't we just say, okay, instead of, okay, we need to have these conversations at home, why don't we just stop talking or having those conversations? Because in the same way that the concept of whiteness can be created 400 years ago, mm -hmm. maybe in the same way it can be replaced 400 years later. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. But then the question after that would be, what do we do in the meantime with those that have been affected by it and are still feeling the hurts? And I'm happy that you said that because that's the point. This, this is the key thing. It's yeah, yeah. just because it's a social construct doesn't mean that it's not hurting people. People, yeah. It yeah. is hurting people. And that's the thing which you mm. need to get to the core, the core of because it's not about who's right or wrong, about if race is right or if race is wrong. When someone, like with the George Floyd incident, when someone mm. is got their, their, their neck pressed to the ground, I'm not asking them. I'm not going to ask them a question like, oh, well, Oh. You, you should you should classify yourself as as this yeah, because yeah. it's tied to this ideology and da, 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 da. no one no one cares anymore because someone's life is on the line um, like, and the point yeah. is that none of this none of the uncovering of these ideas are for the sake of belittling it's for the sake of healing because the point is like yes how do you heal how do you bring human beings together again and see each other as human beings as like fellow you know, not to see each other as coming from different, you know, origins and trying to div divide us into, you know, c certain races according to what we kind of just imagine in our heads and whatever proof we can, like, scrub together to prove our, our biases. But it's about trying to heal this divided mm -hmm. um, nature that's kind of come about by this concept. So... In the meantime, what we got to look at is how we're going to equal, how we're going to make sure that the these these kind of stumbling blocks that have been placed in front of people because of these biases gets teared down. How are you going to like that's that's the thing like how are we going to yeah. right these wrongs? How are we going to um, make sure that people get this healing? And I think one mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. a lot of the times when we come across these conversations it's hard for society because we don't know what it is to heal and forgive. Yeah. Because yeah. to be honest, let me tell you this, forgiveness is a godly quality. Yeah. Forgiveness and, he and allowing someone to move on is a quality that is, it's, it's not very God human. Given. Yeah, that's right. It's not yeah. very, yeah. it's not very common. Like throughout society, throughout history, when we think about the conquests of different empires and different peoples, even before, you know, even before when we look at um, colonialism, before that, the Roman Empire was trashing civilizations mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. with their own, you know, yeah. the, 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 and then even before that, the Egyptians like, massacring other people, you know, the Mesopotam Mesopotamia, the Mongols, I can, Mongols. I can just go through... Mm -hmm plenty of different empires that have just decimated other cultures and today that's not okay but that was just the order of the day yeah and yeah. it still happens today we say it's not okay but we do believe in we do genuinely believe that you know uh, our culture is dominant or should take over someone else's or blah you know there are people that still believe those things so um it's not necessarily that we are, uh, it's not necessarily that it's a problem of the 21st century. Maybe 
we may have to start looking at ourselves and saying it's a human problem how do we move on how do we forgive how do we start to repair the damage because someone yeah. has to pay essentially and i think yeah i think that is the beauty of insert there the gospel <laughs> the gospel exactly that's right <laughs> because yeah. this idea of forgiveness and this idea of um paying the debt of this kind of yeah. sinful human nature because the 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 origin of it as we keep on saying is trying to divide people mm. and people trying to divide and conquer are is is like uh, the battle strategy from ty- from times from eons you know what yeah, I mean people, from yonder from from yeah. way back way back yeah. so yeah. It, it, it's something when we're looking at it and we're trying to heal past these moments, we think, okay, well, maybe we're coming at it from the wrong angle. Who pays the price? Who, yeah. who you know, we speak about reparations. Um, will that solve all the issues? It makes some people feel better, for real. I'm not going to lie. Like, I remember my friend asking me, you know, how would you feel about reparations? Like, you're not gonna turn away free money, are you? <laughs> like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not, I hate you. Not, I hate not, you. To, not to minimalize yeah. the fact of like, listen, yeah, the, yeah. the the amount of things that were stolen in free labor, like uh, you know, in in forced labor, from like from answer at like, because we come from yeah, those course. ancestors from, yeah, as well. Ancestors, yeah, so definitely, there's years of unpaid like unpaid mm. work that's been forced, let alone the trauma mentally psychologically course, that course, came course, to course. to pe- to yeah. the our pregenerate pregenitors like to the people that have our ancestors mm. it's no joke it's genuinely no joke ah, it's no joke but it's no joke ca- can i can money pay that back yeah it'd be nice if it could it, you know what i mean can, but it, it just can't it just can't money doesn't heal your heart you know, I mean? money does not heal your heart, regardless of what you're going through. Money will not do it. So, ah, oh man, this, this, this is why. Yeah. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's why the gospel fits in so nicely. There's no other God you'll find on this planet or made up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people have made up gods that died for you. He paid would the take price. He paid the price. You don't have to pay nothing. So literally, Yo, free money. You know, all all the things that he did bad, like he was. The Bible says that Jesus was made a curse. Yeah. For you, so all those things yeah. that like that the ways that you curse someone for doing these things, the things that all the 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 consequences, all the yeah. the 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 malice, shame. the shame, all that stuff that comes with every single wrong decision that a person can make all that wicked nature that we've done like from from set from centuries and centuries of like yeah. killing and just yeah you know disrespecting pe- like p- causing pain to our brother to other human our brothers, beings our sisters yeah yeah someone someone is like well i need retribution that's the thing like if god is a god of justice Someone, if someone is going to cause pain, then someone needs to take, so, you, you know, know that needs the... to take, someone needs to take that blame. And um, that's why he came in the, in the form of man and, and, and took, came in a human form, got himself and paid that price. Because mm. That, mm. this is a human nature that just kept on perpetuating itself. And even today, like, unfortunately, today it's taken a, this this ideology of race because I don't just put it down to you know race is some sort of separate sin I think it comes down Mm. to this continuation of um, dividing and belittling God's creation trying to like like we're saying basically say that there was you know some of us are better than the other even though you know basically trying to omit the fact of we come from the same place and trying to kind of yeah. rank us off into into different tiers like we're just basically describing with this um kind of formation further of this ideology of race mm-hmm. and yeah i i think that that's a good kind of that's a good way to end this yeah, out man, here. To, to, to end it out here um yeah 
Jesus paid the price. You know what I mean? He doesn't wish for anybody to perish. That all would have life, and that's why he came. He died, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave himself for you. He gave himself for us. And the point is this. There is no... We could kill for the next 50,000 years. It was still... It's not going to make up for slavery. It's not going to make a difference It's not going to make up it's for not, slavery. It's not. It's just... Yeah, There's not it's enough not, people so, that could dead for, no, for how wicked no, that listen, sin was. There's not enough you know I mean? people. Not there's not enough. So to satisfy that the point is this. No, man. Yeah, exactly. No way. So the point is this. Just, listen, Jesus took the blame. He took the shame. He's taking it also. Let's just leave it at the cross and let it die there. And let's just love. And I think that's the point of this whole series. Just show you guys that the integral part of this is to show that we are one. Regardless of our different looks, regardless of our different hairstyles, regardless of our different eyebrows and lips and nose, integrally we are all one and we come from one source and that is from the Lord God himself. So guys, thank you Root Family. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you like hot food, cooked food, um, <laughs> your patty, samosa, we, we like you like sweetie, we like you like banana and cheese. You know, I like Chinese, you know, like the Chinese takeaway. You know them one there. Chinese boy, sweet and sour chicken. We like it like that. So, guys, listen. Thank you again for tuning in, Root Family. If you've liked what you've heard today, please like, drop another comment, share with somebody you think it might help to have, maybe have a new perspective on, you know, race in general. And, you know, even if somebody's having a hard day and they want to hear something, Give them this because, you know, we finished with a little bit of love there for them as well. So, guys, thank you again. We love you. We're signing out. You know, with let's find the route. It's Jordan here and Caleb. See you later, guys. Tune in for the next one.